struck right, me how K-pop seems to be like an accelerated version of Western pop. It is brighter, more dynamic, and more calculated. Its styles and genres constantly shift, and the song sections rapidly change. From the high-cost music video sets to the tightly coordinated choreography, it seemed like the end result of work done by a large number of people with the utmost tech. You didn't DM uh, Grimes to come on the stream? No, actually, I literally rem I remembered after I DM'd uh, uh, the, the, the other lady. I DM'd Grimes as well to come on the stream. It probably won't happen, but I should have DM'd her yesterday. That'd be tight. Technicality. I decided to look into the history behind this genre, and although I always knew that the process would be highly manufactured, its extent surprised me. To understand K-pop, we must look at several factors, beginning with South Korea's history. From the very beginning, South Korea was built partially as a U.S. proxy state to combat the rise of communism. It was established in 1948 during the Cold War, when preventing the rise of communism was one of the USA's top priorities. Because of this, the U.S. appointed anti-communist dictator Syng Man Rhee as South Korea's first president, who began extrajudicial imprisonments and executions of leftists, even leading to civilian massacres. The government received such vast sums of American aid that it would almost near the total size of the entire... Wait, let me pre-scan this shit. Hold up. ...in a coup. Being an anti-communist dictator, Park Chung-hee was supported by the U.S. as well, and continued South Korea's political repression against leftists. The U.S. especially increased their economic and military aid because of South Korea's alliance with the U.S. in the Vietnam War. Six days after Park Chung-hee was assassinated, another dictator, General Chun Du hwan took over and facing national protests, enforced martial law, leading to- I'm just gonna be safe on the historic stuff. To another civilian massacre. It was only in 1988, following nationwide protests against the government, that South Korea finally enacted democratic reforms and held presidential elections. These were won by Roh Tae-woo, making South Korea a liberal democracy, which led to a liberalization of South Korea's culture. This history relates to K-pop in three ways. An increase in South Korea's wealth, strict media censorship, and few workers' rights. Because of the dictatorial nature of South Korea's history before this, there was almost no thriving pop industry in the country until the 90s, which explains the lack of documented South Korean record labels founded earlier than the 90s. The censorship and traditional values enforced by South Korea's dictators were overarching. And it's, um, wow, people with EXO in their names. Saying this video is bad, it's boring. I wonder, I wonder why EXO's lucky one is saying that this video is bad and boring. And entirely changed the trajectory of South Korean pop culture. West I'm sure there's nothing else going on there. Western pop music developed with phonographs and radio stations. Like, even, even great chatters like EXO's lucky one. Okay, like long-term community members can't turn it off. They, they can't. South Korean pop music, on the other hand, developed with the television. Until the 90s, South Korea had only two TV channels, which meant they essentially had a monopoly on the country's popular music. Because of its development in television, South Korean pop music has the focus on looks, fashion, and choreography that we see up to this day. The music segments on those TV channels were known as the Star System. The broadcasting station would provide studio bands, choreographers, music arrangers and conductors, lyricists and songwriters, and dance groups, and then require the star to sing on stage with them. Because the TV channels had a monopoly on pop music, pop stars would have absolutely no control over the creative process. The songwriting, the choreography, the production would all be chosen for them. This is another aspect of South Korean pop music that we see up to this day. What we know as K-pop now really started in the early 90s, when, with the advent of the internet, South Koreans became familiar with Western pop culture. This led to the formation of Seo Taiji and the Boys, who combined Korea's pop music with the Western influences of rap, rock, techno, and R&B, and started the craze that we know today.
Additionally, the 90s were marked by a shift in the South Korean economy, from a focus on automobile, chemical, construction, and electronics industries, to a vast increase in the culture industries, which incentivized the establishment of K-pop managerial companies, the biggest of which, to this day, are SM Entertainment, YG Entertainment, and JYP Entertainment. However, despite the shift to cultural industries, the work ethic remained the same. SM Entertainment, led by Lee Soo Man, initially produced musician Hyun Jun Young, whose debut was a failure, leading to a net loss for the company. After this, Soo Man decided to create a new system, in which the creation of K-pop stars would be entirely systemized, calculated, and under the control of the company. As Hannah Waite describes in The History, Development, and Future of K-pop in the Korean Music Industry, Soo Man therefore developed what is now referred to as the in-house system. No longer would SM only produce their artists, they would control every aspect of the artist's career, as seen in the company objectives, to plan, make, and circulate discs, to control music publishing, licensing, and advertising, to provide agents and managers, to organize events, and to operate a star-making academy. Everything was now housed under the roof of that shabby white building in Abkujung. In the SM building, every position was staffed. Lyricists, songwriters and arrangers, recording engineers, managers, agents, choreographers, design coordinators, image consultants, dance, vocal and acting instructors, marketing executives, and of course, the CEO and founder himself, Lee Soo Man. The system ended up being a great success, and every major South Korean managerial company to this day follows it. But what is the process behind generating- Sorry if you already have, but did you talk about the Yatsei strike? Dude, that's the first thing I talked about today, man. There's a SM Entertainment restaurant opening up in K-Town in LA soon. I almost managed it. Crazy how big these companies are. In South Korea's idols. It typically begins with young students participating in company-run auditions. If the company decides that an applicant is talented enough, they become a trainee. As a trainee, you begin intense musical and choreographical training. They have to sacrifice all guarantees of personal freedom, sleep, and comfort. While living in small apartments, trainees are monitored for height, weight, and figure. Some contracts include agreements to undergo plastic surgery. Social media and dating are not- Holy fuck! You agree to undergoing plastic surgery, dude? That's nuts. Yo, I'm sorry. I don't think- Maybe you can find, like, at the very most, one fucking example of that in, like, the United States of America. Actually, probably not even, dude. People trying to fucking uh, liken this to, like, there's external pressures that cause, obviously, Western pop stars and shit to undergo plastic surgery as well. But I don't think there is a single fucking, like, celebrity that I can think of that has been forced through a contract to undergo plastic surgery. Or even, like, fucking change your hair and stuff like that. That's wild, dude. That's actually wild. Not as wild as obviously a contractual obligation at the top of the hour to run a 60 second ad break, but... Not allowed. Several hours of singing and dancing classes have to be attended every day, all while attending school. The training period can last up to five years, sometimes even more, and at absolutely any point, the company can drop you without a second chance if you do not live up to their standards. It is not only musical and choreographical capabilities that are tested. Trainees are often deliberately put down, hurt, and discouraged to test their mental endurance. Stories of abuse abound. Trainees have been forced to stand in line in front of a scale where their weight would be announced for everyone. People whose weight had not gone down from last week would be bashed. Idols are forced to decrease their calorie intake, often leading to long-lasting eating disorders. Idol Jay Park has revealed that he was systematically abused during his training period, being hit for accidentally messing up lyrics or dance moves. Once a trainee is selected to finally become an idol, the struggles do not end. The intense schedules persist. The group Infinite was reported to have no furniture in their living room to make space for nighttime dance practice. There are images of idols sleeping on the practice floor or of being half awake while waving at fans, as well as countless videos of them fainting from exhaustion while on stage. The contracts they sign as trainees have long-lasting effects, as they often have to repay their debt for the cost of singing and dancing lessons, their wardrobe.
K-pop girl says, this video is much, much better. Please give it a chance. The video is titled, You're Wrong About K-pop, a video essay. I wonder what kind of video this is, dude. ...and living costs, among other things. They even have the term slave contract, <laughs> specifically to refer to unfair K-pop contracts, some of which last up to 13 years. The unrealistic body standards persist, idols often being shamed for their weight or being encouraged to undergo plastic surgery. And even after all this, idols are still often surprised and disappointed at the low wages they receive. Most of the money goes to managers, choreographers, producers, and wardrobe assistants, among others. How do you slice a fraction of a penny and give that to an artist? You phys physically, literally cannot do it. But how could a company have such a tight grasp on someone's life? Why do future trainees sign contracts so restrictive? I believe it to be mainly three reasons. First of all, the state of- Nikki Stan, K-pop stands. I stand with you against Hasanabi in this plight against musical artists. <laughs> this is why this community is fucking hilarious, okay? This motherfucker went and like changed his name to Nikki Stan just so he can make this one joke. With no fucking- like, with no guarantee that I'm going to read his dumbass name or, or uh, a dumbass joke. I mean, he was right. I did end up reading it. ...of workers' rights in South Korea. In 2007, South Korea's minimum wage was 3,481, which is barely more than $3. The state of labor unions is dire. Businesses often hinder union activities without being sanctioned by the government. Some companies set up so-called yellow unions, which are- There's some stuff about that in the fucking uh, Squid Games too, by the way. ...are not independent and do not meet standards for collective bargaining. Other companies design union busting measures or hire private security firms to harass union members. Often, South Korean businesses rely on hiring temporary workers who they are not required to provide insurance benefits to and fire full-time workers to save costs. Even after the intense education that the majority of South Koreans go through, they still find difficulties becoming financially stable. And so they, as well as their parents, look for any- Sometimes stands be like, we are going to back down. You are on your own always. a better life. Secondly, while in Western capitalist countries, an increase in leisure time after World War II led to many musicians starting out independently, using their free time to start bands, write songs, and record music, where a record label deal would only come in later, the material conditions of South Korea did not allow for this. The necessity of intense studying and work leaves very little free time for common people to engage with music without the help of record labels and management companies. Because of this, South Korea's culture of pop music was entirely dominated by capital from the very beginning. People who dream of a career in music Lole, imagine changing your name for a joke says House on Picker. Often Piker. have no chance but to sign up for such managerial companies. Thirdly, it is the age at which many trainees begin their career. For instance, Jessica Jung, now a member of Girls' Generation, was 11 years old when she was approached by a talent scout and accepted as an SM trainee. Her six-year-old sister was- Yo, when people say like, fucking, dude, this video is outdated, what do you mean? Like, she wasn't 11? Okay, she's now 18, got it. But she was still 11 when she was approached, you know what I mean? What, what are you talking about? Oh, dude, dude, this video, the information in this video is so outdated, dude. Okay, she's, yeah, she's older now. ...was invited to audition as well, but was deemed too young by her mother. Regardless, she also joined the company a few years later. Seo Hyun, also a member of Girls' Generation, was only 11 when she auditioned. When asked to sing a song, the first song that came to her head was a nursery rhyme. This shows just how young a lot of trainees are when they begin their career. At this point, they might not realize the full implications of what they're signing up for. The fact that they are sacrificing their leisure time, their ability to have long-term friends, social media, in some cases their health and self-esteem, their childhoods are robbed from them and given up entirely to shape them into tools of the company, sculpting every aspect of their being. Their childhoods are robbed from them and given up entirely to shape them into tools of the company, sculpting every aspect. It means that the industry did used to be bad. And it has since gotten much, much better, but this video doesn't talk about that. I mean, he's talking about how bad the industry was, and this is a video from 2017. I don't know why the fuck you're freaking the fuck out over a video that is four years old at this point, dude. And also, the, the industry is probably, you know, 
when he's talking about like the history of the industry from fucking four years ago, just because it's like better now does not change the reality that it was back bad back then. Effect of their being. Not just their singing and So you're agreeing it's outdated? I don't know enough to uh, see whether it's outdated or not, but it like I fucking highly doubt that it magically uh, got better in a matter of four fucking years. Abilities, but their appearance, behavior, outward personality, and life schedule. In a heartbreaking moment on the South Korean show Big Brother, the lead singer of Girls' Generation, Taeyong, was asked which traits of her she would like to be passed on to her children. The other band members immediately suggested that it would be her voice, but Taeyong, after some thinking, disagreed. <laughs> the fact that Taeyeon wouldn't want to wish her own life upon her children as a famous and admired idol which she worked for almost her entire childhood and teenage years is telling. You might think that trainees having to spend years living together and practicing together develop healthy and lasting friendships, but for the most part, the system hinders this. You're getting very close to the K-pop stand cognitive dissonance breaking point. Yo, if you don't know enough, why do you form opinions based on misinformation? Guys, this is a part of the learning process, okay? I'm not going to go ahead and assume that this is uh, out of the... I mean, this is just absolutely misinformation. Why the fuck? I know Cuck philosophy. I like a lot of his videos. He's usually very thorough. I'm more inclined to assume that an entire fucking subgenre of stand culture that is dedicated to uh, idolizing people who literally are called idols are probably going to refuse to see some of the most horrifying fucking aspects of capitalist exploitation, regardless of how leftist they are, over a fucking leftist content creator who does a pretty fucking solid job of video essays otherwise in an industry that is notorious for exploitation. Like, I'm sorry. Saying that this is from 10 years ago doesn't change the reality that, like, oh, these things most likely, most certainly still happened. Okay? If you're truly a fucking stan of K-pop idols, uh, as you uh, claim to think you are, then instead of fucking whitewashing the horrifying side of the industry, you know, advocate for better conditions for them. Because ultimately, you're no different than your fucking racist-ass, hog-ass fucking uncle who literally is like, I love football players when they're running with the ball real good. But then they fucking turn around in the moment when they like turn around and, and kneel uh, during the national anthem for fucking police brutality. They go, get, get the fuck back up, boy. Get up now. Like, that's just, you, but you're doing that with, uh, you know, Tumblr speak instead. Run that ball. Like, it's no different to to refuse to recognize the humanity of the people that you idolize and love them and uh and while simultaneously like try to defend or whitewash an industry that fucking uh exploits them in horrifying ways to a degree where there's like fucking suicide problems and shit like that i don't know what to tell you then like you're if you're truly an advocate if you're truly a stan you should be fucking you know standing the human and not just necessarily the carefully constructed image and the industry that props that up Trainees, being in danger of being dropped by the company at any time, must adopt a competitive attitude and can never be certain of the future of their friendships. Seohyun of Girls' Generation, talking of a previous trainee friend, recounts. She was training to be in Girls' Generation with us, so for five years she slept, ate, and practiced with us. For five years we had the same dream and we had no doubt that we were going to be in the same group. For five years, we worked hard together as trainees, and after our showcase, we were convinced that we were going to be in the same group. But people at our agency always told us, don't get too close to each other. I thought, why are they saying that? They told us, what if you aren't in the same group? You shouldn't be too close to each other. I thought, that's not going to happen. We're definitely going to be in the same group. We have the same dream. But after our showcase, the members who were going to debut were chosen. I looked at the list of names, and my friend's name should have been there, but it wasn't. Rather than being happy that I was debuting, I was so sorry to my friend that I couldn't even talk to her. After the decision was announced, I couldn't even look at my friend's face. I was preparing to debut, and she was still a trainee. 
Since I still had to go to the practice room, I would see her. I couldn't even look her in the eyes because I was so sorry. One day, my friend grabbed my hand and took me to the bathroom. She looked at me and started to cry, and we cried together. We didn't say anything, but we knew how the other was feeling. So we kept crying while holding hands. Honestly, we cried like that for several weeks. The company has no regard for the emotional traumas it causes, for the family-like dependencies it creates. Just open the video you have in the tabs, dude. No one is uh, saying we don't see the bad, but you're literally overblowing the bad. Check the other video you have in the tab. There by Baby Gang? Yeah, dude. Let me just watch fucking pro K-pop misinformation instead. How about that? Dude, I don't understand why you're like uh, watching a video that's like criticizing K-pop. Instead, you should watch a video made by a K-pop stan that actually defends uh, against all of that stuff. Overblowing suicide, dog. That's fucked up. Overblowing dating contracts. Overblowing plastic surgery contracts. So overblown. It's just a little bit of fucking child labor, dude. What the fuck's wrong with you, you know? Stop overblowing the, the, the exploitative elements. If anything, you could at least say something along the lines of like, wow, you fucking Western chauvinist pig. You don't give a fuck when this happens in Western civilization. Well, I've already uh, mentioned that, however. It's never to the same degree of exploitation. It's not as systematic as it seems to be in the K-pop industry. And not only that, but I also am extremely critical of like fucking child labor practices in the United States as well. So you don't have anything there either. Um, so. Creates only to break them for the terrible mental health that a lot of its trainees have to endure. Once the contract is signed, the trainee has no say in any decision making process. After the creation of this highly effective in-house system, another problem rose up. Piracy. As it became increasingly common to illegally download music for free, the next development for managerial companies was to connect their idols with commercial products and saturate the media. In addition to already being singers, dancers, actors, and TV personalities, K-pop idols now- Child stars in the US are systemic, just saying. Never to the same degree as this, dude. You're nuts. I mean, we've, I've talked about the uh the horrifying nature of 360 contracts how exploitative that shit is i've talked about how you know child pageants are fucking psychotic and should be abolished i've routinely talked about how fucked up child actors are from an early age but to assume that like it's on the same level is insane if you turn around and say britney spears is conservatorship for example well yeah that's such a fucking edge case that like it became a matter of national news for months. Like literally for months, it became a matter of national fucking news. That's how, that's how much of an edge case it is in comparison to like, that look, that seems like a fucking K-pop contract, you know, Britney Spears conservatorship literally feels like a, like an idol contract with what, with respect to like what some of these things have in them now became advertisers yeah and uh, michael jackson and the jackson five is a great example too it's a great comparison but again um so many people literally so many not even so many people like everyone recognizes and talks about how fucking horrifying that was too appearing in commercials for everything from water purifiers to fried chicken Conversely, K-pop music videos themselves became advertisements for external products. Even more than before, the importance of appearance rose above that of reality. Because of this, K-pop ended up influencing not just pop music, but advertisements, consumer products, movies, TV shows, fashion, and all of these things would end up influencing K-pop in turn. This feedback loop created an entire culture that was mainly run by just three managerial companies. As Hannah Waite says, with a firm hold on the Korean domestic music economy, these three companies are able to manufacture culture in Korea, defining what the masses deem to be popular, and as a result, what they spend their money on. They create their products, Korean idol stars, in accordance to what their consumers want, but in turn are able to define exactly what the end product will be, thus manipulating what the consumers want into what they have already created. All respect, I thought the exact same things as you, but what he's talking about are extreme and sad edge cases. He's misrepresenting the entire industry on those cases. This is so saddening to listen to because I feel you're not getting the point at all, and I genuinely adore your stream so much. You're treating everyone who's telling you this is overblowing. The issue is that we're saying the industry does nothing wrong. The industry's fucked up, yes, but not half as fucked up as these videos portray. 
to Western audiences. <sighs> created. This reminds one of Baudrillard's analysis of signs in consumer society. The commodities circulating in a market gain their significance not from their inherent qualities, but from their relations with each other, to the point where no reality exists outside of these relations. The entirety of South Korean pop culture becomes fully manufactured because K-pop idols are influenced by what is popular, but what is popular itself is already influenced by fully manufactured K-pop idols. The commodities produced by the contemporary Korean wave are prime examples of simulacra, copies without originals. Because of the nature of the business, the individual idols have virtually no autonomy in the production process. The division of labor is extremely strict and disciplined, with each department trying to push its limits. Such a way of making music can only be achieved by almost inhuman levels of calculation and technicality. And this is why K-pop appears to be so overproduced. Compared to its Western counterparts, K-pop music videos are brighter, more saturated, the choruses are larger and the hooks sharper. It is all delivered with forcefulness. Genres, fashions, color schemes, and dance styles are crammed into single music videos, desperately trying to fit the visions of a multitude of different people. Everything is characterized by an excess. An excess in the visual and the sonic, an excess in the group structures, and an excess in touring and expansion. Such excess could only be built on inherent contradictions. The contradictions between cheerful, carefree appearances and strict discipline and restricted freedom. Contradiction between confident, independent attitudes. Have you seen how much money is put into music videos? The clothing alone is thousands of dollars. Yes, I am familiar. There's a lot of product placement that happens in that situation as well. The difference is, and I'll use this as an example with like uh, the Chinese streaming industry, right? You have a similar, you have a similar way of like training people to become streamers in China. Now look at the fucking American streaming industry. In China, they've streamlined that fucking process to a goddamn T where uh, it's not even, I don't know how controlling it is, but as, as everything I've seen from the Chinese streaming industry is like completely streamlined, complete, there's like so much training that goes into it. They're literally crafting you as a person uh, and you don't really have a lot of say on what goes on in your life. Whereas when you look to something like uh, the United States of America and the streaming industry here, we're literally self-selecting. Obviously there's like additional privileges and advantages that factor into it that help people get ahead, but um, but to say that like those two industries are similar to one another in how they are constructed is insane. You got XQC, Soda Pop, and people like myself. And on the other hand, you have uh, people who have like been brought in or hand selected uh, that have been training to be, to portray themselves a certain way their entire fucking streaming careers. Okay. That's, that's insane. Like, it's like saying, well, there's Beats product placement in a fucking rap video. And that's the same as like, literally uh, building an entire fucking music video around like a new kind of clothing or car. Attitudes and complete dependence on the system. Contradictions between sexual objectification and innocent. Fans reduce their personality to the things they love. So you're actually personally attacking these people. This has no good ending. What about TikTok hype houses? TikTok hype houses are like the American way of trying to do that, but ultimately it's still a fucking disastrous failure. Like, you really think a TikTok hype house is similar to like whatever is going on here? It appeals to traditional South Korean values, contradictions between outward friendship and the systems. Or you're just digging your heels about something you haven't actually learned about. I'm going to be honest with you, Yonggi, you don't want me to learn more about this because then I'm going to be extremely vicious. It seems like, especially with the counters that I'm seeing from this fucking chat, uh, community members, you don't want me learning more about K-pop, motherfucker. I promise you. Because I'm learning right now. And if you want me to learn more about K-pop, that's not going to end well for you. It's going to end with you fucking despising me a, a lot more than you do currently. Why in the ever-loving fuck would you think that I would ever be defensive of an industry that is, one, hyper-exploitative, it's like an international fucking genre that is uh, capitalism super, uh, capitalism on overdrive. I don't despise you, bro. Well, you will if you fucking uh, keep talking about how little I know about K-pop. You know what I mean? Like, 
why would you ever why would you ever think that I would be like even remotely defensive of of how how this operates in any meaningful capacity? 100% if you learn more you would back down at least a little. I one I fucking doubt it, dude. <laughs> That's insane. I see these artists as uh as laborers. I see these artists as workers who are being exploited, okay? I see them as a as a cog in the fucking machine. But if you unironically think that like uh, K-pop stands don't recognize uh, something here, I think. And that is that like I'm not against these people that we're seeing on the screen. I'm against the entire fucking industry that has churned them out into behaving this way and, and has like reduced every part of their fucking existence to being able to sell whatever kind of product that they're shilling. Okay? You motherfuckers would be understandably up my asshole if I decided to just like get a fucking Facebook sponsorship. You know what I mean? And tomorrow I was just like, this, this uh, stream has been brought to you by Facebook. It's all good. Look, I talk about blind spots all the time. And given how fucking uh, awful the world is, given how awful the world is, like, you know, this kind of commodity fetishization is like one way to escape. And because you tie everything back to that fucking commodity consumption, uh, you, you tie your entire personality back to that. When I criticize an industry, you feel like I'm criticizing a part of you, something that you absolutely love. And now you're looking for different ways in your mind to try to cope with that by saying, oh, he's only doing it because these people are Korean. Okay. He's not doing this because, uh, it, you know, for, for some genuine reason, he's only doing this. He's not seeing uh, that like the Western, uh, he, he's not seeing the exploitation in like Western, uh, music or in the industries. Well, that's not true. I do see it. I'm not even saying you should stop listening to their music, by the way. I don't give a fuck, dude. But it's kind of weird to like, you know, portray yourself as a leftist and then completely throw any sort of fucking consideration to the very same people that you claim to love and idolize out the door. Complete disregard. I get what you're saying completely, but it's not actually that much more exploitative than the Western entertainment industry. There's a sensationalist focus on edge case in these videos because it's easier to appeal to orientalist attitudes in the West. <laughs> okay, man. Like, no. Th that's not true. Yes, there is horrifying levels of exploitation in the American or in the Western fucking, uh, in Western celebrity worship and in Western uh, media as well. But it's, it, it's not, it's just simply untrue if you think that like, this is exactly the same. And that's bad too. I mean, I fucking criticize uh, Western. Uh, I I criticize the the way that like uh, young artists are 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 whipped into shape in uh, you know Western media as well. You shit on American exploitative practices in all sectors eight days a week, but the only time you said the U.S. might be less exploitative, still exploitative than on the, another non-Western country's practice. All of a sudden, you're absolutely wrong. Yeah, I mean that's nuts. It's like, it's like fucking Japanese uh, work culture. What is it called? The everyday man or whatever? The salary man culture. And how demonstrably uh, horrifying that is for the mental health of the Japanese people. When I talk about the salary man and, and the salary man's experiences, like I'm not saying that, uh, you know, Japan is bad or whatever the fuck. Or that Japanese people are bad. I'm talking about fucking how how horrible that uh, that way of working is, that way of work culture is, and it's demonstrably horrible, especially considering the fucking insane suicide rate. Apart from human relationships, finally, the contradiction between the idol appearing as a godly, almost all-powerful cultural icon, and the reality of the idol's complete lack of creative autonomy. Knowing the suffering that underlies K-pop's bright and glamorous appearance makes it almost morbid. It reveals the absolute incongruity between capitalism's appearance and reality. The material basis that underlies pop music this excessive could only be inversely bleak. 
What the managers of K-pop succeeded in doing is replicating the kind of work ethic that you would find in sweatshops or 19th century industrial labor and applying it to the music industry. Perhaps nowhere else in mainstream music will you find pop stars so openly characterized by complete disposability. Some corrections. The 13-year-long contracts have not been legal since 2009. It's now limited to seven years. I say that Jessica is a member of Girls Generation, but she hasn't been since 2014. I say that in the 90s, with the advent of the internet, South Koreans became familiar with American pop culture. This is inaccurate as South Koreans have access to American culture long before that. What I meant to say was the liberalization of media and communications technology in the 90s made American culture easier to access, which led to a growth in its popularity. In addition, it must be noted that some of the things I mentioned do not apply across the board to all trainee situations. For example, dating is not prohibited to all trainees, and not all trainees have to pay back the money spent on training. As in any large industry, there are exceptions. There are, of course, also changes happening in the industry, but this video was more of a broad outline of how K-pop developed. Any comments involving news on legal and social developments in the K-pop industry are very welcome. Thank you for your views and comments. I really appreciate it. Seven years is not that bad, though. A successful group will want to go for that long. Like, there's nothing wrong with a number. Even then, this is like... If you guys think that this is like an absolute own of this video, you're completely in the wrong here. Yeah, if you're a fucking stan of K-pop, if you're a K-pop stan, you should probably be additionally more critical of the way that this industry fucking destroys uh, the artist. That's longer than my military contracts, Lamau. Remember that chatter said it was all misinformation, but the chatter didn't even check the comment? Yeah. Capitalism is bad, but in Korea, if they're making, if they're producing stuff that I like, then it's not so bad. America has shit like Daddy05 and Facebook moms that force their children into certain behavior for fame, but it's not a fucking hyper-capitalist labor exploitating humanity denying culture industrial complex. Yeah. And those edge cases are oftentimes fucking r routinely criticized. They're not as, like, welcome or accepted by broader... Like, the, the comparisons you can make is, like, Disney stars. Like, child stars. You know what I mean? That's, like, a valid one. Because it is accepted and recognized by the industry. But that's it. Like, the... The other ones are, like, literally, like, fucking Michael Jackson. Uh, and that's... You know, that is not necessarily the, the uh, normal attitude that everybody has.